Hey, baby boy. Yeah, good boy. Oh, baby boy. So, welcome back to another studio vlog. We're here today. We're actually about to do a little shoot. So, you can see our little setup right now. I'm currently using the second camera as the vlog camera right now. So, you can see everything that we're doing. In this video, we're going to be talking about my three Fuji lenses that I can't live without. Let's go for it. We just finished up a talking head shot for Elevator, online learning platform where they gather talent across the country to do live sessions. Shoot went really well. Have a look right here. So this is the vlog setup that we have going on. Screen over here, nice lantern, little kick over there. Our talent is in the groove. How are you finding the experience? Amazing, super relaxing, super fun. Um, I never want to do this for a living, but it's good fun. It's easy. <laughs> and how do you find the teleprompter? Oh, that's the best thing. I feel like I'm a professional speaker now. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Well, thank you so much. And yeah, I can't wait to uh, see when it's live. And we use some of my favorite lenses that I personally can't live without. The first one is this, I'll show you. This one right here. This is the 18mm f1.4. Now, I personally fluctuated between, I fluctuated between the 23 mil and sometime use the 16 mil. I made a video about why I love the 18 mil link up here, I believe. Interesting video. It explains a lot about why I love it. I think now in the studio environment, I love it as a talking head camera. Right now I'm using the 13 mil 1.4 Viltrox because I am vlogging and kind of don't want to have to extend my arm out too much but for talking head perfect beautiful that 1.4 is great the autofocus on it is absolutely amazing pair it with a pro mist i use a 1 8 pro mist filter um just purely i don't want to give it too much where it starts to look a bit crazy and the client's like hey can you remove those haze enough to which where they feel like the image is flattering not too much um, detail in the skin, but just nice, soft, beautiful, crisp image. A lot of people complain that the Fujifilm X-H2S has a really crisp and ultra sharp image. Now, for me, that's an advantage because you can really crop in. Even You don't even have to shoot 6K with this camera. You can shoot 4K at like, I think it's 360 or around that 300 megabytes per second. You can crop in a lot. 6K, yeah, you can crop in even more, but I feel like 4K is enough get your framing right, pair the 18mm 1.4, that's a great setup. For photography, even better. I've actually got an event tonight, so we're gonna head over there. I might be able to show you some of the images I get with the 18mm, even if it's in a tight environment. So let's see. But before we do that, we also have lens number two that we used for today's shoot. Let me show you. The 35mm f 1.4. Now, this lens, some people hate it because of the autofocus, it's not reliable. I think for what I need it for, it's perfect. Once it latches onto someone, it will stay there, so long as I don't go out of the frame. So for example, in today's talking head setup, it worked great. You have the 18mm front on, side angle, 35mm f1.4. It latches on perfectly. I know that the 33mm 1.4 is probably more reliable but the character you get out of this lens in this small form factor this package is incredible we're always looking to have a lens that has character at least for me anyway but then with that the trade-off the trade-off is that you won't have autofocus if you have a lens with unique character and sharpness this lens is kind of best of both worlds it gives you that unique character and sharpness but with usable autofocus which i think you can't really find them in the market right now and it's kind of keeping me in the Fujifilm ecosystem. I have been thinking about Sony because their lineup is pretty compelling considering that I just played with um, Alps Lifey's Sony FX3 and to be honest man, the camera body size and the lens sizes are pretty much the same with Fuji's modern um, lineup. So, but having said that, their look is quite clinical and I think what's unique about Fujifilm that no other brand will offer you right now is having something with character and good deep to decent autofocus, which 
I think give me my look and it's part of my image. Not to say that the gear is, I'm reliant upon the gear, but it's the tool that I would choose to use to get the look that I'm after. And I can do it in a package which re doesn't require me to have too much faff. Anyway, enough rambling, let's move on to the next lens. All right, sick. So I just copped a mission to bring you guys on board onto the next shoot and talk about my next lens. So I can use the examples in the shoot this evening. It's a corporate dinner in the startup scene, so it's gonna be a bit more casual, a bit more unique. And I'm just really glad that I got permission to use some of the footage, some of the images to talk about this next lens. This next lens has a lot of character, something that I genuinely can't live without. I can't leave the Fujifilm ecosystem because of this one lens. We're about to find out. So that's the 56mm f1.2, my absolute favourite lens. I don't know if I could find a replacement in another system. This lens has literally built my event and corporate career. It's just something really special about it. It doesn't have the best little focus, but when it locks on, it locks on. I think what makes it really unique is that that 1.2, you could shoot a candlelit dinner. I'm going to put some images right now, show an example of that. And because it's APS-C, you don't have to worry about shooting at f1.2. You're going to get people in focus. And that's, I think, the right sweet spot. It's the right recipe. And I think that's what makes Fujifilm a really strong consideration, really. Not to forget to mention that the size as well, it's really lightweight for being an 85mm equivalent. Like, this lens was smaller than my Canon DSLR 35mm f2. Uh, I think I said that in my original YouTube video, so if you're new to this channel, just a kind reminder that that's how small this lens is when you compare it to full frame. Also, here's a bit from Nick talking about the importance of event photography. I think the documentation of the events is, is it's really easy to overlook because particularly now, like we're talking about presence. We want to be present. We want to give each other 100% of our energy and attention. And that can mean not having a record of it. And looking back over time, having that record of the event, you know, the sentiment you can take forward is incredibly important. Both for sharing the experience that we have here, which I want to be able to take some of the people. So from a nostalgia point of view, right? Just having that something to kindle the memory. So yeah, to me, having a, a document of events like this is super important. This is something that I don't think AI is going to get rid of just yet. I think if anything, it's going to, people are going to become more hungry for this kind of content because essentially you can't really replicate an event. You can't really replicate a wedding. So if you're into it, give it a shot, man, go out there, capture those candid moments. Anyway, enough rambling. Let's head back to the studio for a nice summary. Gosh, that sounded really corporate. All right, I had time to sleep on everything. So let's quickly just reevaluate those three lenses. 18mm f1.4, great for video, good autofocus. I use it for all my talking head and anything wide angle, whether it's events, anything video related where I want reliable autofocus. 35mm f1.4 is kind of like my vintage lens with usable autofocus and even for video, honestly, it's it's okay, it's not the end of the world. I know people kind of expect the best of the best, but when you have a lens that small, there's always going to be a trade-off. And finally, my 56mm f1.2, like I said, I built my whole corporate wedding event business all on this lens. For the size and for the amount of light that it lets in, I know a lot of people will say that even with Sony full frame, your ISO values are quite different. Therefore, for the amount of light that it lets in, a full frame, let's say f1.8 will compensate that while having a cleaner image. I've seen so many different comparison videos about that and honestly, when you have them side by side at the same shutter speed, the same ISO and the same f-stop, there is a slight, you, you lack a bit of depth of field on the APS-C, but the amount of light is the same. I don't know if it's to do with what sensor, but anyway, I don't want to ramble too much about that. I like the amount of light that this lets in, I can still get sharp images. I even use this for video, believe it or not, but the way I shoot is I use the AF on button to hold and lock that focus. So if I'm handheld, 
I've got my subject unlock AFON button, hold it. So even if they go out of frame and come back, it's not, the focus is not going to change. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like this style of content, leave me a thumbs up, comment down below any of your thoughts. Tell me if there's a lens that you like and I haven't explored yet. I really do like the 18mm f2. I've done a whole comedy tour with that lens. So if you want to see that, give me a, uh, just let me know and I'll see you next time. Bye.